Guten Abend, ich äh, darf Sie ganz herzlich äh, hier bei uns im Museum für Gegenwartskunst in Siegen begrüßen. Mein Name ist Thomas Thiel, Direktor hier im Haus und gleichzeitig Kurator der Ausstellung nach August Sander. Ich freue mich, äh, dass auch Gäste aus Essen zu uns angereist sind, wo wir eine Leihgabe auch dankenswerterweise ähm, äh, durch äh, Thomas Selig und die fotografische Abteilung des Museums Volkwang bekommen haben, die auch im Zusammenhang steht mit äh, unserem heutigen Gast, der noch weiter gereist ist, nämlich aus Kalkutta zu uns gekommen ist, Soham Gupta. Herzlich willkommen. Und uns, äh, ja, nach der Eröffnung, äh, zu der auch einige Künstlerinnen und Künstler auch angereist sind, die Gelegenheit gibt, noch mal intensiver uns mit einer Arbeit auch zu beschäftigen, äh, die wichtig ist, die auch noch mal die Perspektive weitet, weg von Europa, äh, wie gesagt, nach Indien, nach Kalkutta und auch noch mal andere Aspekte ähm, im Werk von August Sander ähm, widerspiegelt oder sozusagen auch in, in Bezug zu August Sander zu besprechen ist. Ich möchte ganz kurz ähm, unsere Gäste Ihnen auch vorstellen. So Hom Gupta bewegt sich mit seiner Arbeit eben zwischen den Bereichen Dokumentarfotografie, Kunst und Schreiben. Er beschäftigt sich sehr viel mit Themen wie Einsamkeit, Isolation, Missbrauch, Schmerz, aber auch sexuellen Spannungen, existenziellen Fragen, auch dem Wechselspiel, was uns ja auch hier beschäftigt zwischen Vergangenheit und äh, Zukunft. Er wurde 2018 mit dem British Journal of Photography Award ausgezeichnet, hat im selben Jahr äh, das gleichnamige Buch zu der Serie, die wir hier oben präsentieren, Angst, bei Akina Books herausgegeben, was dann auch zu Einladungen äh, zu dem bekannten Le Le Rencontre d'Arles, also zu dem Fotofestival, bekannten Fotofestival in Aal führte und im Jahr darauf ähm, auch zu der von Ralf Rugolf kuratierten Biennale in Venedig, an deren Hauptausstellung Sohom Gupta eben auch teilgenommen hat. Er hat derzeit neben der Beteiligung hier im Museum auch eine Einzelausstellung, die noch bis zum 30. April läuft. Ich wurde vorhin danach gefragt, im Maison Robert d'Osno in Paris. Und äh, das ist seine erste Einzelausstellung in Frankreich, wo er aber sozusagen vielfach auch schon mit Projekten und Workshops eben auch vertreten ist. Ich freue mich auch, dass Thomas Selig äh, zu uns gestoßen ist, seit 2018 Leiter der Fotografischen Sammlung des Museum Volkwang in Essen. Er hat dort, das ist eine zweite Parallele zu dieser Ausstellung, Einzelausstellung, kuratiert zuletzt mit Tobias Ziloni, aber eben auch mit Sohum Gupta. Du hast sehr früh äh, diese Werkserie auch angekauft, im Zuge der Biennale oder in dem Zeitraum der Biennale 2019. Ursprünglich hast du visuelle Kommunikation, Fotografie an der Fachhochschule Bielefeld studiert und äh, auch ein kuratorisches Studium angefügt an der Jan van Eyck Akademie in Maastricht. Thomas Selig war 2003 bis 2018 Kurator, Sammlungskurator am Fotomuseum Winterthur und von 2013 bis 2017, bevor er eben auch nach Essen gegangen ist, Direktor desselbigen Museums. Und äh, diese Leihgabe, die wir hier präsentieren, ist eben auch Teil der Sammlung des Volkwang Museums. Insofern möchte ich mich auch nochmal ganz herzlich bedanken, dass wir diese Arbeit hier zeigen dürfen. Ähm, eine ganz kurze Info zum Ablauf äh, der heutigen Veranstaltung. Wir werden jetzt äh, so circa 15 bis 18 Minuten eine Präsentation zeigen, eine Fotopräsentation, die Sohum Gupta eben für diese eben erwähnte Ausstellung in Frankreich neu entwickelt hat aus dieser Serie Angst, die Sie auch oben sehen. Es sind viel, viel mehr Fotografien, die zu dieser Serie zählen, das auch mit Ton unterlegt und dann direkt im Anschluss in das Gespräch in englischer Sprache dann auch einsteigen, damit wir uns gegenseitig verständigen können, geben nochmal einen Ausblick auf eine neue Arbeit, die sich aus Angst äh, entwickelt hat. Und Sie haben auch dann im Anschluss nochmal die Möglichkeit, äh, Fragen zu stellen und äh, wir versuchen, Antworten zu geben. Und ähm, hoffe, Sie bekommen einen tollen Einblick. Damit möchte ich die uh, Einführung, I would like to stop with the introduction to the evening uh, today and would like to um, ask you to play the, your presentation of 
auf Angst zu haben.
Yeah, thank you, Soham, for this impressive uh, photo film also of your thank you. work, Angst. Um, before we speak about uh, this work specifically, because it's different editions, you started with the photo book, um, several installations uh, and exhibitions, and now um, this photo film, which offers even, even more in terms of imagery. But uh, before we speak about this series, I would be interested in your artistic background, so how you became a photographer, because um, that brings us, I think, also to your work, you just have seen. Uh, I started in 2005. Uh, my father got, a, got me a camera for my birthday. And from that day on was I was obsessively photographing my sister uh, at home mostly. And then I, uh, when she protested that she don't want to be photographed anymore, that's when I turned to the streets and I've been photographing it forever, like from 2005. Yeah. I also uh, did a postgraduate uh, diploma in photojournalism from Ateneo de Manila University in the Philippines. Uh, uh, and uh, it was interesting. Uh, but uh, the turning point of my life was meeting Antoine Dagata, the photographer. Uh, and he, in ways, helped me s introspect. And that's how I started. And this project also started. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Antoine Dagata, how would you describe his work? Uh, or what has he taught you? Well, you know, uh, we used to have a, a workshop for 10 days, 12 days in, uh, in a place in Cambodia. And he would psychoanalyze us every day. From the whole day, he would psychoanalyze. And he would ask, why, would, why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you doing what you are doing? And then he saw all our pictures and whatever we have made, whatever we have written. And that's when he started saying that, you know, you photograph people who are in the margins because you're yourself in the margin because of you, because of, because I was very sick as a child. I had, a, I had severe asthma attacks and then Later on was I had depression and panic attack as a result and anxiety also. So in ways I connect with the people in the photographs and that's how it started. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Did you, did you also make your living as a photographer, as a journalist, for example? Uh, I, I worked for a, a woman's magazine for five years, but that was it. Then I was jobless for quite a while, during which I made angst. And now a little bit going on. Uh, Thomas, would, would you say that you, uh, this uh, psychoanalyst was uh, Antoine Dagata, did it help you to reach a point where you could say, okay, I found my voice yeah, through, yeah. Uh, I don't know, through the collaboration with him or uh, just the way how he was actually questioning what you have done before and what would you do in the future? Yeah, I think it was a psychoanalysis as well as uh, the introspection that helped. Uh, also, I would like to say that uh, I've, I, I've been photographing people with emotional illnesses since 2008 when I had my first breakdown. So, and I have been photographing them ever since uh, because I have a connect with them because I survive because I come from a privileged background while many people take to the streets and this is what happens. Yeah. And how, how you developed angst? Did it start it image by image, session image. by session? Or uh, did, you have, did you have this um, concept already um, no no 
it it was like day by day i was going shooting going shooting uh, then the editing process was later and that's how it happened what is the day to day situation did it uh, i mean what was the motor to go back because basically uh, uh, i mean you have done it many years actually yeah, the I question have. is uh, did the motivation change from i don't know the first year to the third year to the fifth year because gradually in especially in the slideshow you could see that there was a harsher period and exactly. i don't know if it was connected to i don't know black and white yeah, as a technique yeah. Or black and white translating your ag almost aggressive, exactly, um, exactly, like aggressive attitudes yeah. towards the other. I, I think there was a big difference to the color work, for example. Yeah, yeah. I started with the black and whites first, and that was when I was the angriest as a, a youngster in my twenties. Uh, and then I did the color work, which is more mellow, and there is more candid spontaneous uh, celebration of life in some ways yeah would you say that one or the other is closer to you the other is closer to me no what the black and white or the color uh. <laughs> i mean of course the other is closer to you but the, for me it's a question um uh where you kind of so you yourself associate with more than the other or is you could say everything is so i'm gupta it's it's a period of five years i mean it's also for me interesting to see that the editing process actually took place afterwards so, afterwards. You, had, so you had a period of time where you kind of were just producing and uh, adding up to yeah. to the big pile of uh, images yeah. um, and the question is when did the reflection start or when did the also the change of mood when you say you got yeah. moody in a, in a way. Yeah. How did that start? Well, I also wanted to uh, show the dustiness of Calcutta, the monsoon greens and moss. So that's how I started black uh, color. And first I did black and white and then color. I think the color work is closer to me. And speaking about um the society and, and the people you found and also the place. Maybe most of us haven't been to Kolkata and there's plenty or was plenty of, of life in the streets. Um, how did you, for, for what kind of reasons did you choose uh, this kind of area or could you describe in your own words what, yeah. what was your interest in, in this specific place and area inside Kolkata? I think uh, when I was doing the work, uh, it was almost like time wrap because uh, uh, nothing was changing in some ways. Uh, it just had, I think Calcutta just had uh, 32 years or 34 years of communism in Calcutta which shattered um, a lot of dreams. And then uh, uh, while I was doing angst, I was seeing slow gentrification of the city. And now it has all changed. There's very gentrification in some ways. So what I have here, uh, you cannot see uh, very well. So so is it historic already? So it, is the I think it's historic. Also, the, the reason also is that, you know, I was in a workshop in a hotel uh, which was famous for uh, hosting people like Gra uh, Gunter Grass and uh, Dominique Lapierre and others. And so one day I was sitting in doing the workshop and there was this group of American people and other people who were sitting together and the, one of them said, let's ah. Let's raise a taste to poverty. Uh, let's ro let's uh, raise a toast to poverty in Calcutta. So that made me very angry because people have been coming to Calcutta for a long time to photograph poverty. So I wanted to have my own way of looking at it, and that's how it happened. Yeah, you were just telling that uh, you're coming from a more privileged family. Middle class, yeah. Middle class. And uh, what we uh, 
find out or what what I introduced also is that your your work was very well received internationally and it caused a lot of interest but you got uh, inside uh, the country in India you got um, also from well-known colleagues you also faced lots of critique for the for the image you you sketching or drawing um, of the society. Could you explain uh, in your own words what what the main critique was and what your interest was to show uh, with the series? Well, uh, many people do not know, but I had my first big break in the Delhi Photo Festival, which was happening in 2015. I showed this work. And there was no protest at all, no criticization at all. And then, uh, well, to be honest, I am not very surprised by this uh, criticism in India because it's it's a extreme work. It's a work in the extremes. So in some ways, uh, it provokes a person. I, I'm just always pinching the person to, poking the person to uh, re react. So that's how it happens. Also, there are other complications like for internal politics and all. So, yeah. Um, you are now talking about the relationship of the viewer towards your photograph. Exactly. I would go a step further or like back and saying, what is your relationship between the photographed and yourself, because sometimes I see that uh, there is a dialogue. Yeah. Sometimes I speculate they don't realize that you are photographing them. A uh, few, yes. Yeah, a few. And for me, it's a question like, do you have a clear contractual situation with them? Of course, of course. What, what is the contract? I pay every one of them. I carry prints with me that I give to the people. Pins? Uh, prints. A prints. Yeah. Like photographs, photographs of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So <coughs> I take, uh, it takes the time to build a bond mm -hmm. uh, and that's how it's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is also a nice bridge, I think, to August Zander because he was actually living in Cologne, having his clients here in the Westerwald and he came every weekend with new photographs taking new photographs, bringing back the photographs. So this kind of exchange yeah. was something like a business model. And it seems to be like another business model, even, uh, I don't know, they are not getting their picture in the public space. It's it's more for a kind of personal memory, yeah, as I yeah, as understand yeah. that. In fact, one of the most interesting things that happened was I gifted a picture to someone and he folded the picture in four halves and put it in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So we think about photographs as very precious things that should not be folded or anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, to see the other perception of that is very interesting. What is their reaction to being photographed the way how they are photographed? I mean, they most of them love it. Mm -hmm. uh, and those who don't, I don't show their pictures. So all the pictures we see here are actually kind of confirmed by the other side. Mostly. Yeah. Those whom I could find. Mm -hmm. And some are not, uh, which are not in the slideshow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you follow some of the people for a longer period? Or yeah, do yeah, we yeah. see um, just moments of, of this? I followed quite a few of them for a long period of time. And in fact, there's a picture where a man is like a boxer in the black and white picture. He is the same man uh, in the photograph, which is like Goya's photograph. A man grabbing another man by the hand, it's in the picture. And there's also another picture of him masturbating for the camera. Yeah. So, yeah. And how would you describe, uh, you explained... Um, you, you pay um, the models um, or you also pay in prints. Yeah. Um, but you also try to establish kind of a relation. So what, exactly. what, what, is your, what was your specific interest um, in these people besides, besides. this contract? Uh, 
That's an interesting question. My interest in these people is I survived, but they didn't. So that's my interest. Yeah. You survived by? I survived mental illness, but they, most of the people didn't. Mm, okay. So that's one interesting thing. So that's why you have a kind of uh, empathic relationship to what they are doing, exactly. uh, that they are living. They are living. Okay. Okay. Also, okay. It's, uh, I, wa I want to provoke it because when I see the privileged world, it's, I feel angry. Mm. People don't even see what is going on in their own city. Mm. And especially today with rightist politics and all. Mm. But I think it's important that one show what one doesn't want to see. It's interesting that you said that I think the premiere was at Delhi Festival. Yeah. 15? 2015. 2015. Soon after, there was this big uh, presence in Venice. So you, the, from India to, I don't know, the world or the art world or so, how to say. Uh, in between, there was a book published, which mm -hmm. also had a different public. Um, for me, it's interesting how the demand towards your work has completely shifted in a way. I mean, uh, as a local or as an Indian photographer for an Indian public festival, whatever, has a difference than uh, being faced to a different audience which has other remarks towards, um, I would say, the otherness. I mean, yeah, you are yeah. there, nobody knows that you survived this mental illness, yeah. but people would say you are exploiting your subject. I mean, I think that is a, a that is the main area. that's the main criticism. I think it's a gray area. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the exploitation, but exploitation is everywhere in everything that we do. Even if, uh, like on the street, if you see people uh, moving on in cars, and then you see uh, people eating from the dustbin, mm -hmm. and it's exploitation in some ways. I she's I showed the picture. But now it's time for others to do it, do something for the people, for the missionaries to do something for the people, for uh, NGOs to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another criticism was that you emphasis, um, emphasize uh, a kind of colonial image yeah. of, of the city or the, the country also, because uh, there was this comparison is how you look at people. Yeah. In, in the past and uh, in, in the present. Yeah. And um, that is maybe also something that um, yeah, triggered um, Coloni the, the, I, the, I'm, a bit, the uh, I'm a bit angry at colonialism because it was a British made, man made famine that happened. Actually, quite a few. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's an interesting question, actually. I think it's... Uh, Calcutta's I mean, poverty is unique because yeah. in Bengal, we had the Bengal famine, mm -hmm. which uh, killed a lot of people and made many penniless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what I wanted to say is that if you come with that argument to say there is a colonial view towards what you are doing, I mean, you are forbidding almost to work out of your country yourself I mean, exactly. then at a certain point you uh, you uh, uh, you are kind of ruled by the past and don't find the entrance to the present or the future yeah. I don't know I don't I mean it's a question how to find a solution for that but at least it's it's a uh, what is it like it's a proposition uh, to think about it I think it's also in a way I would say it's a provocation you're kind of yeah, testing yeah. people in a yeah. way like how, how far Do you go without a comment or a yeah, response? Yeah. But basically, I don't know if you want to. Uh, what is the uh, like uh, the the goal which we, you reach? Is something like: Are you happy when people react in what way or the other, or in do you want to in a nasty way? Yes. In a nasty way. So yeah. that is make that I makes you the happiest. I love when people are shocked, when people cry after seeing the pictures. Mm -hmm. So yeah. The, the funny thing is that I'm uh, like, especially the color works are for me very tender. I mean, uh, of course, it's a harsh reality, but, but I think very you're very tender. empathic to it. I think so. Also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to the to the selection of of um, images. Yeah. 
you started with the or you started with showing the uh, black and the, the work uh, the black and whites yeah. in the photo festival Thomas mentioned then the book came out yeah then uh, a certain selection was uh, shown at at uh, the Venice yeah. biennial also its um, a selection was made for the Museum Volkwang which we're showing upstairs 20 yeah. photographs and now you're with the film you're opening up yeah um, yeah Again, so I it's not only portraiture, it's also still life, it's the trees, it's the, the surrounding. Exactly. So is there, we discussed in preparation of the talk, is there, would you say there's a core of angst and then there's the surroundings Sounds. or how would you describe it? I think, uh, yeah, it's made up of different uh, things and people and the spaces which are very interesting, yeah. And these places or the, I don't know, the, the trees, the abandoned buildings or yeah. so, they were photographed, or you photographed them very early in your work. Yeah. Uh, a lot of black and white works were actually made in this kind of, uh, yeah. uh, they are almost like flat surfaces or so, yeah, yeah. which are so contrary to this closeness you are creating mm. in photographing the people. I mean, this yeah. is the distance, like one meter, I don't know, one meter fifty yeah. or so. But then you have this kind of uh, almost blurry signs of emptiness or so. Exactly. How important is it to have the uh, the comparison or the, uh, the the contrast in that? I think it's important to have a balance. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have a balance, then it's okay. Also, uh, these pictures also speak of the same, the landscapes, I mean, they speak of the same uh, same thing, uh, which is death, because which awaits all of us. Yeah. You say that they are dead or they show death? Uh, I mean, they hint at the assurance of death. Yes. Okay. So this is waiting for us, yeah. kind of emptiness. Um. I have one question to this um, vertical horizon uh, work because when you said the, uh, uh, that these things are all photographed in in the vertical images or so, mm -hmm. um, how obsession how obsession driven was it to to work in this grit into that pattern or did you also make things which are horizontal? I also made a lot of horizontal pictures initially. Um, Where are they? <laughs> Somewhere in the slideshow. <laughs> uh, no, in the, not in that slideshow. Yeah, a few. A few there were oh, some. Yeah, yeah, ah, sure. okay. I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I started horizontally, then I did verticals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And would you like also to speak about the soundtrack because that's something. Yeah. Totally new and developed um, was mentioned um, yeah, it, it, with a musician. It, it, it was done in collaboration with a, a Spanish French uh, artist, sound artist. So we did it together for the Maison Duanu uh, photography exhibition. And, uh, so it's if you go to Paris, you can see the sound and then hear the sound and see the pictures. Yeah. But you're also showing prints there. Yeah. 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 Are they somehow, uh, is there a difference to how it's shown here in a Museum für Gegenwartskunst and uh, very, very Maison Douaneau? I think it's very photography driven. Is yeah. there a difference in the way uh, how your work is treated? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a d there is a difference because uh, in the Maison Douaneau, I mo I am showing all kind of collages and all, while here is straight tuck, 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 mm -hmm. like that. Tuck, tuck, tuck. <laughs> This is how it was shown in uh, Venice. I yeah. remember when when we were talking about our acquisition. I said like, so what will be the result of any exhibit? It was a bit speculative to say like, what is like the core of your work? And you said it's the 20 images. That's it. Yeah, that's and the definite yeah, edition. That was definite three years ago or yeah. two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's now, clear that it's not the, the end of the story that you kind of... Now of I think I'm a little less uh, fearsome about criticism mm -hmm. because I've already had a lot of that. And so I show more. Mm -hmm. 
And do you think the criticism is bigger when there are less images or? The opposite. The opposite. Okay. And mm. the, the criticism, is it something like where you say, okay, this is part of your work? Because you mm. could say without the criticism, the work doesn't exist in the right exactly. way. Exactly. If people are indifferent to the work, what's the point of making the work if you are a provocator? Mm -hmm. So it's important to provoke people. It's a bit similar. I remember, I don't know, it, it must be like 1995 or 97 or so, there was um, uh, Boris Mikhailov working I, on case history. Exactly. Uh, he was in the Ukraine. He was uh, photographing homeless people. He gave them also a fee, uh, but it was more like he, he kind of labeled it as a kind of uh, model fee. So, and I think with that kind of transition from actually, this is something like the scene they're photographing, but by paying exactly. these persons, it became a completely different attitude towards what he was actually looking for. Exactly. And at that moment, they became actors and they were kind of playing the for the camera. Is there a similarity in approach? I think similarity like because to I pay everyone because it cannot be a, it cannot be other than a give and take uh, relationship. Mm. I think I need to take and I also need to give. I may not be able to give a lot because I was broke when I was when I made the work, mm -hmm. but I gave whatever I had. Mm -hmm. Mm. But now you're close to series angst so you're not continuing photographing in in the series so you just reworked on the photographs yeah. you already did so there was a certain moment where you stopped uh, with the series yeah i would would be interested in why did you why did you stop so that uh, i can do something new So it was was a moment where you were finished also with yeah, your fin it's questions like and perspectives. Also, I thought that I might become a one work wonder with one or someone with just one identity, like Francis Ford Coppola with Godfather, uh, like that. I didn't want to be. I I wanted. I didn't want to be sick of angst, so I stopped and did something else. So it's like angst one, angst two, <laughs> angst three. Yeah. Yeah. Now I yeah. think I'm more calm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. the work has also become calmer. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what has changed in the attitude to your new work when you say, okay, what is it, uh, I want to finish something to start something new. What is yeah. a new attitude to, uh, towards new? I think the basic underlying themes are the same, but I, I do it differently more snapshot kind of work and yeah maybe that it's a moment to introduce uh, the, the new the new yes okay and then afterwards i think maybe we reflect shortly and then yes. i think it's a moment where we can open up to the uh, public to uh, receive questions comments perfect Perfect. Criticism. Criticism, yes. <laughs> yeah. Please. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. Now we look for Eden, the new work. Uh, actually, if you go to my website, you will find the entire work. But uh, now I'm showing just 30 images because time is limited. Mm -hmm. That was a selection of 38 photographs from yeah. a total of? Uh, 120, around 120. I think the biggest problem with me is that I cannot tell a picture with one image or two images. I at least need 100 images <laughs> to tell a story. Yeah. Is that series already finished? I'm still working on it. I'm just filling in the blanks uh, now. So yeah. It's, I'm still working on it. I'm still interested in the new. What has changed in your attitude? Light, daylight <laughs> came in? Yeah. Less people? Less people. What else? And I think Eden is about uh, 
city that is regressing back to nature and it is also uh, owed to impermanence and also to the sheer uh, what do you call it uh, sheer in uh, uh, carelessness with which uh, indian people treat uh, their heritage and their people so yeah because there's a lot of what is like old history yeah. taken back by nature exactly. um like dead animals Uh, yeah. So it, it's also something like a life circle exactly. in a way you're looking even further than the speculation of exactly. death or the, the, the was like the expectation of a death. Yeah. You're looking actually further in subject uh, like was like uh, aerial, I would say aerial photography. Yeah, yeah. Is it like that or what? Uh, topographic? It's, no, it's not topographic. Uh, it's not topographic uh, per se, but... I think uh, Eden is more about uh, what can I say? I lost my word. Lost paradise. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it the idea to to go back to a beginning? So the nature it, is like, taking over again, yeah, and, yeah, we, and it, the, so the world the, restarts. Exactly. 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 That is it. How important is language for you? I mean, now you didn't find the word, but actually I think that both Angst and Eden are very kind of, on one way they are lyric, but on the other hand, they are also like, you have a whole universe of speculation, ideas and things like that. Um, how important is that part of your work that you guide or uh, also in the book, uh, uh, which we have talked about it earlier, that, that uh, your writing took a very important part. Yeah. How yeah. important is it here? Because a slideshow is a slideshow, mm -hmm. uh, an exhibition is an exhibition. Does your work lose something when it's not accompanied by word? Uh, for Angst, definitely. For Eden, I haven't written anything. I want it to be a book, finally. And I am looking for a publisher. And... Uh, And uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the thing is that, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> How important is the word? Uh, oh, so the word is basically important. Uh, but this time I'm trying to make a book without any words. Uh, it will be just hints, subtle hints at certain things. No conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we, it's a good moment uh, to open for questions uh, from the public. Oh, no.